Welcome to the Bind to Open sequence in 20 minutes or less with Sandy Dixon. All right, this is going to be a fun one. Take your heels and feet and swing them over to your left side. Take the hands behind the head and drop that left elbow towards the floor as the right elbow goes up towards the ceiling. Maybe your gaze can be up there too as you breathe gently. After a couple breaths, switch sides with the legs and the arms, reaching the left elbow up towards the ceiling, the right towards the floor. Get that nice lateral stretch here. And then come back to a seated position with the left leg crossed in front. Hinge from the hips, reach forward, take a deep breath in, and then walk the hands over to the left. After a breath or two, walk them all the way over to the right. We'll repeat this on the other side now. Sit yourself up, recross the legs with the right leg in front. Hinge forward, walk the hands over to the right side first. Try to breathe into both sides of the rib cage before moving over to the other side. Come back to center, push yourself up. And now we're gonna move to our belly. Doing low cobras, take the hands next to the breast line, slide the shoulder blades down the back and pin the elbows. As you push the feet into the floor and the hips slightly into the floor, you'll be slightly constricting in your glute muscles as you rise up and down with your breath and your torso. After a few of these, take a block or a blanket for a pillow for your forehead and ear, taking the right arm at a right angle. We're gonna stretch through that pectoral muscle and shoulder area, but there's a natural stopping point, so don't blow past it. Watch me on this left side. My arm is at a right angle, elbow is no higher than my shoulder. And I can't push over too far without the shoulder starting to be impinged. It's a much different opening than this next one when I extend my right arm at more of an angle, still resting my head on the block or blanket, not on the arm. That's one of the most common misperceptions about this pictorial stretch, is people try to stretch that arm at an angle and then rest their head on it. That really doesn't do much for opening of the pectoral muscle, more maybe under the armpit you'll feel that, but this with the block right in the center will help tremendously. Now interlace those fingers behind the back, snug the shoulders towards midline and pull that torso up and down. With breath, inhale up, exhale down, remembering to stay connected to the tops of the feet on the floor. For the last one, if it feels okay in the back, lift up into Shalambhasana, locust pose. Slightly constricting the glutes, tipping the hip bones forward and into the floor before releasing. Now grab that block again and take your right arm and bend it at the elbow. Take the left hand behind for more of Gomakasana arms or the first bind of our arms. This feels very different laying on our belly than it does when we're sitting up. On this next side, I'll demo with a belt. In case you can't reach your fingers, this is another option is to elongate the span between the hands with a belt. Feel that stretch along the tricep, under the arm, and all the way through the sideline of the body. Now after a few breaths in each of those stretches, and you may want to repeat them a couple times, let's sit up, tucking the left leg under, and bending the right knee and holding it with the left arm. You'll clasp your hands and try to pull those hands apart as you sit up a little straighter, sliding the shoulder blades down the back. Now cross knee over knee. If this is not accessible, you can sit on a blanket or you can sit cross-legged. And we go back to those Gomakasana arms now. With the left arm up, the right arm behind, use a belt if you want to so that the hands can reach one another. Now this next is a heron modification. I hold both sides of my foot and you see how I bend my elbows to try to bring my chest closer towards that thigh. Now, if I need a belt here, I can always hold my foot with the belt, but let me demo on the other side what we're gonna do here. First, let's go through that twist, holding the, the left knee with the right arm, clasping the hands and trying to pull those fingers apart. Keep your breath smooth and even through practice today. Samo Vriti. Make sure you do the Gomakasana arms on the other side, something you don't see in this video, but repeat that before starting with your heron.
Now here I'll demo with the belt. I lift the leg high. Now that's a deep hamstring stretch, so maybe I have to come lower, or maybe I have to lay it on the floor. These are all different variations of moving into heron. You might want to repeat those a couple times before moving into the first down dog of the practice. Finding your nice length here, have the feet together and then bend and straighten the knees a few times. When you're ready, extend that right leg long and then bend the knee and twist the body open. Taking a breath or two here, and then we'll move into hanging plank, swinging that knee forward and holding it before planting the foot between the hands. Now I'll hop that back foot forward and get myself into a pyramid pose. I can always have blocks under my hands here, but I want to make sure that my hips are level, as if the creases of the hips are laying across a bar evenly. Now I'm going to put a block under my left hand, come up halfway so that I can revolve in this pyramid pose. And it's accessible for me to lift my right arm up towards the ceiling and look, but if that's not good for that shoulder, if you feel like you're torquing the shoulder, just keep the hand on the waist. Let's go back to hanging plank before moving back into plank and downward facing dog. We're going to do the other side now. Lift the left leg, twist the torso open with a bent knee, and then swing it forward for hanging plank taking a breath or two before planting that foot between the hands. Setting yourself up for pyramid on the other side here. Now push your hands firmly into the floor and try to drag the fingers forward as you slide that left heel towards the back. You might want to try this a few times and see what that sensation feels like before moving into the revolved version. Now you'll notice here, maybe I don't lift my arm right away. I'm trying to set my hips to stay as level as possible. And I also watch that I don't roll out to the pinky side of my left foot. I'll return back to hanging plank, then plank, then downward facing dog. This is a great time to stop the video and go through these standing poses a few more times. But you can keep going if you'd like for another twist, another hanging plank, but this time we're going to come into side angle pose. Watch the bind that I do here. I take that right arm behind me, and the left arm underneath my hamstring. I don't want to curl my chest forward. I'm trying to open it up, spin it around to face it more to where my side of the mat is. Let's try the other side and see what it looks like from behind. I lift the left leg, twist open, come through hanging plank and plant the foot. Now as you turn that back foot, see that you're in heel arch alignment. The front heel will touch the back arch if you drew a line. Now I use a belt there just to show you that's a possibility as well. But notice how upright I'm trying to keep my shoulders. It's that nice long line from the shoulder all the way down to that right ankle. Once again, this is a great time to pause the video and repeat these standing poses two to three times more until you get the hang of it. Then walk yourself to the middle of the mat. And in your Uttanasana, I want you to bend your knees and slip the palms of the hands under the feet. Try to straighten the legs here. Stay there for a few breaths before rising up. Spreading the legs now, I'm gonna show you a version of Bird of Paradise. It's just the beginning stages of this. So I bend my knees, wrapping my right arm, taking the left arm underneath that left hamstring. I put the gaze forward and then I find my balance to rise. Do you notice where my arms are? They're not over by my buttock muscle. They are more underneath that hamstring, underneath the thigh. When I'm ready to repeat the other side, I wrap the left arm around the back. The right arm goes underneath the thigh. I lasso that leg, look forward, find my balance to stand. Now this is a very dramatic pose and you don't have to do it just in a 
in this video's um, demonstration. You can start by putting a foot on a ledge and trying to maneuver at that point into your bird of paradise, but keep practicing it or come to one of my classes to try it. Once you've squat down into Malasana here, you can do a little twist side to side if you wish, or just stay in Malasana for a few breaths before Upavista wide leg pose, and maybe even Baddha Konasana, releasing through the hips and the inner thighs. We'll finish by coming into Shavasana. Now again, this pose or these practices are meant to be an inspiration for you. Link these sequences together from my videos. Take your time to feel what binding feels like to open up through the chest and the upper back. How the hips feel. What kind of lightness do you feel in your body when you can open up that heart center and expose it through binding and twisting? In your Shavasana, take those deep breaths longer on the exhales than the inhales and release any tension from the body. Let the heart feel like it's expanding outward, bringing the heart into a coherency with your intention and with a feeling of that intention. Stay here as long as you wish. And remember to keep practicing, keep coming to classes, finding instructors that you like. And until we meet again, namaste.